Hey guys, Matt from Eastwood. I just got done unboxing the new Monster Eastwood horizontal and vertical bandsaw and I wanted to show you guys a couple little things with setting up and adjusting this uh, right out of the box that I'm running into and I thought you guys would find helpful. So let's get started. All right, so my first little thing for uh, setting up your new bandsaw, if you're like me and you're super excited, don't like to read instructions and just wanna get the cutting, uh, they put one of these little notes that are actually is wired right onto the handle of the bandsaw. So if you go to grab this thing and make a cut, you have to you know, touch this thing and look at it and it forces you to read it. And uh, of course this is, is definitely necessary. So what this is telling you, the Cliff Notes version of this is, is that you need to tension the blade before you start cutting. They actually loosen the blade uh, from the factory for shipping purposes and then when you get it you need to tighten this. So the process is very simple. Uh, basically there's a little gauge or diagram here on the side of the machine and there's a little white slash uh, in the machine here and that is set towards the yellow side of the little diagram and that is on the loose side of the blade tension. You need to actually tension, tighten this knob to tension up the blade and it will pull it to about the center of the blued side of that little diagram and that is the proper tension for your blade. Now after you do that you may want to make a couple of cuts uh, with the machine to break in the blade and then check this uh, tension again as the blade may stretch just a tiny bit and you may need to turn this knob just a little bit. But I found after a couple of cuts mine didn't move too much and I am pretty much ready to go. But that is the first thing that you need to check and adjust before you start cutting with your machine. All right, so the second quick tip for setting up your new Eastwood bandsaw is setting the auto shutoff. Now the auto shutoff on this machine is adjusted up and there is a little bracket that's actually bolted to it that you need to take off so that you can actually lift the arm of the bandsaw up. Once you take that off, you need to adjust the stop and also you need to adjust uh, the shutoff switch on the machine, the auto shutoff switch. So the first thing I did was I set the machine so I turned my little bumper here so that the blade was just below the cutting surface, so the teeth were just sunken below the cutting surface, that would tell me that I'd be able to cut basically all the way through um, when it hits on this, when it rests on this bump stop. Now the next thing you need to do is actually set the switch uh, for where it shuts off. So when I first had this set up, uh, when it was cutting through, it actually shut off just before the, um, the box tubing was cut and the and the, there was just like a little sliver that needed to be cut more. So what I did was I actually loosened this little nut here and we moved this bracket up so that it did not turn off quite as quickly. And after it went down, it stops and just barely touches that switch. So when it's done cutting, it will drop down, hit the switch and it touches right there on the bumper and we're good to go. So if you get it set up like that so that just immediately after it hits, um, after it cuts through and hits the switch, everything should be resting on the bump stop and it's good to go. It may take a couple of times to get the adjustment right, but once you get it set up, it'll be real sweet. The workpiece will fall and the switch will knock off at the same time. It'll be sitting right on that bumper and you're good to go. Once you adjust it like that, there's really not much to do and it's pretty much set up and ready to go. All right, my third and final most crucial tip for setting up your new Eastwood horizontal vertical bandsaw is the hydraulic power feed on this. So this bandsaw is, uh, the head of it is quite heavy and uh, it's actually set up with a hydraulic cylinder here on the side that has a knob that you can adjust and actually set how quickly this goes down and the uh, the feed of the machine. So with this hydraulic cylinder, there is a little switch on it that is basically an on off. So if you set this all the way up in the vertical position, you can actually uh, flip this the, the switch down, which will lock it and set it in the horizontal position. But what you can also do is use this knob to adjust the feed and you can set up with the, by watching the chips that are coming off when it's cutting, uh, the rate at which it's cutting. And this does need to be adjusted depending on what you're working on. So a quick way to set it up is you could set it like this where it's just uh, down from being vertical and we can just take our hand off and let it start dropping down and watch what it does. And then we can turn our knob. The more we turn it to the right, the slower it's going to go. And if you turn it all the way to the right, it's actually gonna stop. And you'll feel the, the little knob actually stop. 
and that's gonna you know not move it at all and then from there you could slowly go to the left and change the speed in which it drops so we can go down like this I'm going to the left going to the left you can see it's starting to move just a little bit if I turn it real fast and we could drop it back somewhere around in there now you need to watch the chips as I mentioned if you're seeing nice uh, nice chips coming off and it's not like dust if you see dust coming off it's actually too slow if you see that your chips um, are coming off and they are like blued like it's getting hot or it's smoking really bad or if it's chattering or howling when it's cutting you may have the rate of speed too quick and you need to actually slow it down a little bit so uh, you can use this knob to adjust the speed if you need to adjust something on the fly or you hear a sound that you don't like and you want to slow it down really quickly you can actually hit the switch um, the little lever on the hydraulic cylinder and that will stop it immediately so you don't have to think about which way to turn the knob or you can you can shut the knob um, or the lever like three quarters of the way and it'll actually slow it down and you can adjust it with that on the fly really quickly again that's if you hear something across the shop that doesn't sound right for me I think it's a little uh, easier to remember to just grab that knob turn it down and that will stop it or of course you can flick the off switch but, but that's the way you can do it on the fly so use this knob adjust it watch your chips and on each item that you're cutting uh, you may need to do that if you're changing the size of the item or if you're going from like a hollow box tubing to solid round bar you may need to change that feed speed and uh, you'll have to adjust it with that knob but if you adjust it real quickly to something that's a nice level drop and it's going something like that I have mine right now at about at four and that seems three or four that seems to be a good rate that uh, I found for the handful of first cuts I did with box tubing and round bar stock to be uh, sufficient so if you set that up right it will definitely get it set up and you can just walk away and let it cut all right guys so that was my top three tips for quick setup with your new horizontal vertical Eastwood bandsaw. I've got this all set up with the wheels in my shop and I am ready to start making some chips with it. I'm really excited to have a bandsaw of this size because now I am able to cut much larger material. I can cut bar stock that is solid and I don't need to stand there and, uh, and hold the lever down like with the bench top model. Uh, with the power feed it's going to be nice to be able to multitask while I cut and I can't wait to put uh, a lifetime of cuts through this thing. Thank you guys for following along. If you want to learn more about the horizontal bandsaw or any of our other cutting tools, you can visit the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. Thanks guys. Catch you later.